All right, this is a quick recap of uh, lesson 111. <clears throat> uh, basically, we're looking at using the normal curve. So we've been talking about scenarios where the normal curve comes into play. We're talking about, you know, uh, height. We're talking about how long you can hold your breath. Um, things that there's going to be a variation between the average among the entire population um, or sample. And also... Um, Things that are randomized. Uh, as we get through the unit, you're going to see that some data will fit into the normal curve and some won't. So that's later on in the unit. Uh, but first, looking at this, continuous data, we want to just break down the two basic uh, forms of data. Continuous data is where all numbers are involved. So if we have uh, our normal curve here, there's going to be there's going to be intervals. So this might be 1 to 2.5. This segment here would be 2.51 to 4, and so on. So with continuous data, all numbers are included. All numbers included. All right, so we're talking about, um, you know, decimals are included. Basically, it's continuous. So, um, i.e., you know, 3.4 to 5.7. That would be an interval. So the interval is basically allowing us to have all values included. So if you're 64 inches, you would be um, in what's called discrete data, which we'll talk about. Um, but if you're 64 and a half inches, if we're doing it with continuous data, we'd be able to make the intervals that would allow that value to be on our normal curve. Discrete data is a little more straightforward. In discrete data, we have um, we have each of the bars in our histogram here, um, are only denoting whole numbers. So we have, geez, we have uh, this bar denoting all that fit into um, a value of one, two, three, four, five, six. So discrete data, you can think of it as discrete discriminate. Uh, discrete data only includes whole numbers. So we're talking about whole numbers, and we can express either of these um, on a normal curve. We just have to remember. Uh, the difference between them, and that's going to come into play later in the unit. Next, we have population and sample. So think of population as all my students and all my classes. So if this is Mr. P's students, then the sample uh, really has to reflect the population. So you want to make sure that you have a sample that has some of the qualities that the population does. Um, so a sample from a uh, a population of my students would be, you know, period four students. So all 35 students in there would be uh, my sample. And if I'm really trying to get a good connection between what's reflected with the sample and the population, I have to make sure that they match. So if I was doing this and I was looking at the population of all my students, period four, I might also include period one because that's the honors class. That would reflect uh, qualities of all my students. Next, we're talking about standard deviation. That's the main thing for today in this lesson. Standard deviation is just how much a value deviates from the mean. And from here on out with mean, we're going to be denoting it with the, the symbol mu. Okay, mu kind of looks like an M. I also think of it as like a a U with a long tail on it. So we call that mu, and that is the, um, the mean, but also when we're talking about standard normal distribution, the mean is also the median, which is the middle number if all the numbers are sequential, and it's also the mode, the number that happens most often. So looking at this, um, standard deviation is just how far you're moving away from the mean. So if we're talking about IQ, the mean would be 100. So if you were, um, if you had a higher IQ than 100, you'd be on the right side of the graph. So 50% are going to have higher than 100 as an IQ. 50% are going to have less um, than 100 for an IQ. Now, standard deviation is just talking about how much it deviates from, from the mean. So if we have the mean right here, one standard deviation goes in both directions, and it's all the values that go in both directions. Okay. So this this increment here, this, this distance between the mean and the 
standard deviation to the first is going to be the same as the first to the second, as the third to the uh, second to the third, and so on. So standard deviation doesn't change. It's pretty much uh, derived from all the values that are included in it, and uh, relating that to the to the mean. Um, that's not something we're going to have to work out. We're going to use technology for that. Um, that's more so. Often you see that in college classes. You have to work out the you have to work out the standard deviation using the summation. So we won't have to work on that quite yet. Uh, the other thing is mu is talking about the mean. When we're talking standard deviation, we use the symbol sigma. Sigma is the symbol where pretty much like a zero and then a hat that goes to the right. So when we see this symbol here, sigma, we know that we're talking about the standard deviation as far as how far the increments are moving away from the mean. So the next important rule is the empirical rule. It's also the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. And with this one, really what we're talking about is what percentage of values on our graph fit within one standard deviation, within two, and within three. So this first one, 68, this is for one standard deviation. So if we're just looking at this, if I am looking at everything under the graph, all, then I'm talking about 100% of my values, 100%. This takes into account, you know, if we're doing IQ, it's all the students and their IQ scores. So if you're under the graph, all of them included is 50%. So that often, or that means that since the mean is right in the middle, it's the average, 50% are to the left, 50% are to the right. And we're going to use this knowledge, this knowledge of uh, how the standard deviation break up the normal graph in order to figure out uh, how many students are included in a certain interval. Okay, so this is all of the graph, okay, that's 100%, 100%. Now, if I'm looking at this area where it's one standard deviation for the mean, I know that from the empirical rule that 68% of the values are going to be within one standard deviation of the mean. One standard deviation in each direction. This is 68%. Right? So if I was just looking to see, instead of in both directions, one standard deviation in each direction, if I was just looking in one direction, if it was the mean to one standard deviation on this side, that's half of it. So instead of 68, that'd be 34. So you can cut it up and split it just like that because it's symmetric in both directions. Uh, next we're going to look at 95. So you probably figured out 95 is talking about two standard deviations. So from the mean, from mu, we go two standard deviations in both directions. So here's one standard deviation, there's two. And what that tells me is that of all the values I'm looking at, 95% of all the values are going to fall within this uh, two standard deviation um, deviation there. Okay. And finally, the last, as you can guess, 99.7 is talking about three standard deviation. This is really uh, most of most of the values you're going to find. Things that are beyond this, and I'll talk about in a second, are often called outliers. Um, let me finish this first. So you can see that from the mean, three standard deviation is pretty far out. It almost includes the entire graph. And from our empirical rule, rule we know that's 99.7%. Okay. So again, if I was looking at this and wanted to know, well, what is the percentage of values that are between the mu and three standard deviation just on one side, I would take 99.7 and divide it in half. Okay, so we can look and know that it's symmetric on both sides, so we're gonna have um, basically uh, the same percent on the left as on the right, because it's always moving from the mu, from the mean, out one standard deviation, two, three. Okay, so now let's apply some of this. Let's think of a problem here, let me get rid of Get rid of this information. All right, so we have our mu right here. Okay, and let's say we're talking about um, what students' gas mileage is, is at a high school. So some students drive to school, and let's say that the average, the mean, is 28 miles per gallon. Okay, 
And let's say we're also told that the standard deviation, the amount of deviation from mu, the standard deviation is, let's go four miles per gallon. So we know that this gap right here from the mean to one standard deviation is four miles per gallon. Going this direction, it's also four miles per gallon in the negative direction. So to go from, from the mean to one standard deviation is going to be increasing our value of 28 by four. So this right here, one standard deviation, this would be 32. Two standard deviation would be 36. Going this way, we have 28. Since our standard deviation is four miles per gallon, 28, we go 24, and we go 20. So you can see the standard deviation is, is really um, pretty straightforward. I mean, when we look at this, we could see, if we're given the standard deviation and the mean, we can figure out what values would be at each of the, uh, the, each of the uh, sigma values. Okay. Now, if I'm trying to find what percentage, okay, what percent, what percent of students have, um, um, what percent have mile per gallon greater than or equal to 24 miles per gallon? So first we want to look at our graph and we want to see, okay, we're talking about 24 miles per gallon, so which have more than 24 miles per gallon? It's going to be from 24, which is negative 1 sigma, to the right. It's all those values. So a car that has 40 miles per gallon is way over here, and that would be included in, in the values I'm seeking here. So we, kept, we go ahead and draw our normal curve, which is the first step. Then we're going to go ahead and fill in the area, the shaded area we're trying to find. Now one other note is the percent that is included in the graph can be also found by um, computing the area under the graph. And when you get to calculus, this is actually what you'll be working on with calculus. Um, taking the derivative and the integral will allow you to find the, um, the area underneath the curve. You'd find the area of what's shaded red and then make a proportion to the entire, to the entire um, 100%. And that would give you the percentage that is shaded and also the percentage of the miles per gallon greater than 24. That's a little foreshadowing for next year. So forget I said that if that's confusing. All right, so we're going to go ahead and look and see, okay, I want to know the shaded area. So first I look at this and I see I could figure this part out on the right, all this. I can figure all this out because what do we learn about all of the graph, all of it is 100%. So this side on the right, this is 50%. Okay, so right at the mean, that's 50%. So really all we need to find from there is this other part we add them together. Okay? So looking at that, I know that it's from the mean, uh, from mu to negative 1 sigma, right? Just that part. So then if I just recall that 68% of the values are going to be between mu and 1 sigma in each direction. I know that half of that, half of that, right, this, half of that would then be 34%. So I know that this half from mu out to 1 sigma is 68%, so just from mu over to negative 1 sigma is going to be 34%. Okay. So I add these together, we have 50 and we have 34, we get 84% of the students have a car that's a gas mileage greater than 24 miles per gallon. So this is the basics for this. Um, let's see. Let's say what percentage have a mile per gallon that is um, between Let's go 24, no, 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 let's go 20 to 36. Okay. So 20 is over here. 20 is over here at negative 2 sigma. Right? So really I want to find all of this, and I look and see that really what we're trying to find is from, from you out to negative 2 uh, sigma and positive 2 sigma. So we're going two standard deviations from you. In doing that, we know that uh, the empirical rule tells us right off the bat, two standard deviations is 95%. Okay? So what I just figured is this entire 
this entire bit here, right, out to two sigma in each direction is going to be 95%. So you can see that the standard deviation we're given at 4 milli, uh, miles per gallon allows us to see uh, the increments that it goes away from you with, with each sigma, from 28 to 32 to 36, 28 to 24 to 20, because it's 4 miles per gallon for each sigma. From that, we're going to be just given problems that say, well, what's the range between them? You shade in that area, and then you have to get clever with con combining, cutting in half, to figure out what percent's included. So this is the first step. Um, next step is going to be the z-score, which we're going to do today. Z-score basically allows us to find the percentage of values that are included in our interval, um, but we're not going to be using whole values for our sigma. So instead of one sigma, you may have to find what percentages are included um, from 1.25 sigma to negative 0.5 sigma. So we're going to do that today, and really all that does is we're going to use a z-score chart um, that's going to allow us to find um, what percentage for for uh, sigma values that aren't whole numbers. That's coming up next. All right, so don't forget to subscribe. Um, and don't forget all the assignments are on Edmodo along with the keys that are posted later in the day. All right, thank you.